Hello, everyone. My name is Moses Murdoch. I'm a med student and a step one tutor with MST. I wanted to take a few moments to share some tips for those students whose schools are considering transitioning, taking step one after the core clerkship year. My comments will uh, be general in nature, and so you should definitely consult with trusted mentors, faculty, and advisors from your school who will know the ins and outs of your curriculum and your particular situation. That being said, all of us at Med School Tutors would love to hear from you. If there's something that I don't cover in this video, please send us an email, give us a call, contact us on social media. We've got a whole bunch of people with experience working with students from all over the country and all around the world. So first, a word of reassurance. I personally took step one after my core clerkship experience. Uh, I was definitely a little nervous thinking, oh wow, I'm gonna be away from some of the basic science for a while. And I was fine, all of my classmates um, are in general fine. And you are not at a disadvantage um, by taking step one after some clinical experiences. So some concrete uh, thoughts and suggestions. First, while you're actually in clerkships, focus on those clinical studies. This is probably, for many of you, the first time that you have an in-depth experience of this type and the skills that you learn will, are just foundational for, for your future clinical experiences and for the rest of, of med school. And the clerkship year is also really important for residency applications. And so making sure that you're doing well, that you're engaged during clerkships should be your number one priority. Um, in addition, and specific more to step one, you have the advantage now of having seen a lot of the diseases that show up in step one vignettes. So in a way, you're kind of putting a face to the name of some of these diseases that you previously kind of only encountered in textbooks. Also, many schools have shelf examinations that are clerkship specific, so internal medicine, OB-GYN, PEDS, family med, etc. And by using high yield resources such as UWorld for Step 2 CK, you'll get more and more used to answering questions in that vignette style that also applies to Step 1. So in a roundabout way, you may actually be helping yourself um, by exposing yourself to more questions in that style. Lastly, just a point that if you've been uh, finding space repetition software such as Anki useful as a preclinical student, and it isn't uh, super time intensive, you could consider um, keeping up with those due cards while you're a clerkship student so that those high yield facts are sort of fresher in your memory when you exit clerkships and go back to dedicated step one studying. But again, I wanna emphasize, your job is to be a good clinical clerkship student um, and it, you are not, uh, you're not at a disadvantage if you focus solely on that. Now, after you've garnered all of this incredible clinical experience, you're coming back to step one, be really kind to yourself. Um, no one expects you to be, uh, you know, memorizing every detail of biochemical pathways after a year of focusing on clinical medicine or having all of the rare genetic disorders um, at the tip of your tongue. Um, so knowing that those, uh, those basic details might uh, not be top of mind for you, spending some time upfront working on some of these areas that require a lot of memorization could be useful, just that you're expecting that that might be something that will require a little bit of extra effort um, once you get to dedicated step one studying. And I think that a lot of you will sort of experience what I experienced, which is that even if you don't immediately remember all of these different um, details, they tend to come back quickly because this is the second or third time that you've been seeing it. I hope all of these tips have proved useful for you all. Until next time, I hope you all stay safe and good luck with your studies. Bye.